Hey guys, Alan Short here. Uh, Rukia Ampo is fighting Borkow on the 6th of May. Um, Rukia comes in with a record of 26 wins and 8 losses. This is his most recent fight against Kosei Yamada. Um, let's get into it and we'll talk about whether or not I think he can beat Borkow. Let's go. So you can see already, you know, it's tall, rangy, very fast left kick already. Very long. You know, Yamada being busy and, you know, uh, I covered one of Yamada's fights before against Petch Pomerung. Okay, let's just see that kick again. So a little bit of creativity here. Just kicks to the outside and then flicks up with a, with a left kick. He throws it in a way which is quite safe. Um, and then a the high tee. But I'm just going to check this kick out one more time. I think what he does is turn his toes in rather than kicking on the outside here. I think he kind of kicks his toes in, so it would be like like the ball of his foot would hit against Yamada's liver. Um, it looks that way. And then a high teep to push him away. I mean, it's a great way of uh, getting control of the ring. Very, very fast boxing. A little bit lazy there, though. I mean, just th this like range finding. Against someone like Borkow, you know, it's quite dangerous. Um, very fast switch kick. Mm. Something to think about is that he's got a very narrow stance. Um, but long but narrow. Um, if it shows you from like the from the back or from the front, I'll, I'll try and pause it and show you. But when someone has a narrow stance like that, it can be very difficult to defend low kicks very well. Um, it just kind of brings you off balance. Like, bear in mind, you should, if your feet are here, you... You should need to point it out here to defend the kick like effectively. Um, so that would be something to look at, you know, from a coach's perspective. He's having a few moments where he's sort of switching off as well. Like I feel like it could be a little bit busier, just even with the jab and a front kick. Um, there's that teep again. Yeah, I mean, kickboxing rules, so, you know, limited clinch. Yeah, he comes in, he's got two good wins over uh, Gal Fairtex, or formerly known as Gal Fairtex. That high kick, switch kick is fast. It's, just, it's a very small switch. Some, it's quite a good thing to do if you can really shorten that switch, like, especially if you're going to throw it high. Um, you, but, like, you just need the kick to go up fast. You don't need as much power. Um, and it can kind of bully someone into making their hands stay up right, so that they kind of open up around the body a little bit. A yeah, very, very small switch. Yeah, you can see he's trying to find a rhythm I mean, Yamada's not making it too hard for him. You know, he's... Look at Yamada. He's not being busy. He's not really offering any feints or anything. You know, and he's still not really turning it up. I like how he did that there. Like, he kind of gets in and gets back out again without getting damaged. I like that, you know, he switches, but like he steps forward instead of like switching. Boxing's very fast. Nice. Good. If it throws like a three shot combination, makes a little bit of distance and then just jabs on it, like on his way back out again. Smart. It's like a, it's a good thing to do. You come into range and then you get back out again, but you kind of keep yourself safe. Nice head movement. Yeah, you can see he does switch off a little bit. I mean, this isn't an effective way of defending that kick. Look how he, he drops his hand. Um, that, that, that's concerning. I mean, Borka doesn't really throw those shots. So there's that kick again. 
Now, he, he throws the kick differently that time, but uh, that that's, those kind of tricky shots like that only really work once in a fight, to be honest. Like, someone will pick up on that. Okay, come on. Yeah, I mean, Yamada's got some damage on his arm here. You know, the kicks don't look like much, but they're, they're you know, they're finding a home on his arm. Yeah, so that's that kick from the start uh, and then into the high kick. Look how he, so he kicks there just to set it up. Um, but look how that lands. Got his toes in against his, uh, uh, like, this is going for the liver. I mean, that would have hurt. Um, and he pushes him away with a high teep, which Yamada pushes out of the way of. Okay. That nice boxing and then a jab on, uh, to exit. I mean, that that's like an amateur boxer. The way that he throws this jab, like, look how tight that is. That, that, that's concerning. So something that's interesting is that he has got... Uh, he's lost five fights by knockout. Um, his most recent one, was, I think, was in 2020, uh, which he lost by... He got knocked out with a left hook. Now, borkow has got a very strong left hook. Um, I mean, Borkow's best weapons, really, is that at the outside low kick, uh, the switch kick on the left side, and the left hook. Um, you know... It, if he's really willing to push forward and try and take the ring away from Borkow, then, you know, he's going to need the cardio support to, to support it. But he could be successful if he does that, trying to keep Borkow on a back foot. Um, but Borkow is very strong and very clever, you know, and the, the longer he's on the outside with him, like Borkow is going to be kicking the, kicking the outside of his leg. He's going to be like throwing that switch kick all the time. And then he's got the danger of that big left hook. Mm, I mean, after what I, I haven't watched one of his fights all the way through. So, from what I've seen so far, I like Borkow's chances, even though Borkow is is older. Um, you know, Borkow's never really unfit. You know, and it, although he hasn't really had a hard fight for a number of years now. Um, you know, Nicholas Larson and I think was it Chris Nimby or something like that, the Dutch guy that he fought in Maz fight. Um, I think they were his hardest fights more recently, and they were like 2019. He's had a few exhibitions since in a bare knuckle fight, but, you know, they're just exhibitions. A little bit of creativity here, just to make up some distance. So he, he likes to hold the center of the ring. That's why he does these, these like, big attacks and then pushes the opponent to the, to, to the outside of the ring. It's very nice boxing. I mean, classic K1 combination, jab, cross, then left hook to the body. But what's interesting is the way that he throws it. He doesn't throw it like a hook to land there. He throws it as an uppercut. So his hand's like, his hand's more like an uppercut than it would be a hook. Um, but that's a really effective way of throwing that shot. So many people try and hook around the arm and, you know, it's, it's difficult to land. And, you know, you hit the elbow or you'll just hit the hip. If you get it in there, it is, it is more effective, in my opinion. And Yamada's landing some low kicks of his own here. I mean, you can see the damage on uh, on uh, Ann Paul's uh, leg. You know, he's, it's gone red. You know, and it doesn't seem like Yamada's throwing the same kind of power in, in those shots that Borkow does. Nice high knee. Shall I see? High knee. It's good. The ball cast slightly taller than Yamada. I mean, but it, it, not a significant amount. He'd be able to knee ball cast in the head too. Hmm. Just as I mentioned, it, like his leg looking a bit sore, he switches to southpaw. Just see when that happens. Okay, uh, now. Okay, so he switches southpaw now. Uh, I'm not sure if it's because his legs hurt or it's just like a tactical thing. Just wanted to try. I mean, Borkow typically struggles a little bit more against southpaws. 
And now back to Orthodox. Yeah, I mean, Yamada's not throwing much heat in the, in the look at this kick. It's like very Mawashigeri, like a uh, point scoring style of throwing that kick. Just like lift his knee up and then flicks his foot out. Compared to like a Muay Thai style kick, which would land with the shin. Especially from Borka. Oh, that's that knee again. Yeah, it, it, that's, a, that's a good tool for him. Nice long right hand too. He's good when he does this. When he's, when he's staying busy, just picking away. Again, that, that switch stance, it, it, it's nice. I like that. And he gets back out again. A switch stance, come forward, and then just takes that same that's the same leg which is in front, takes that back, and he's out he's out of danger. He just fight the long game quite well. I just think he needs to stay busy. You know, if he starts to switch off with Borko, he could be in trouble. Okay, let's see if we got any highlights. Straight right. There's that combination. One, two, left hook to the body. Again, just look at how he throws that left hook. It's nice. You know, he's not trying to get around the elbow. He's just trying to get, like, underneath it. Very effective. And it can even work against southpaws. You know, where... Uh, most shots from the lead side, if you're orthodox, but aren't really as effective against southpaws, but that could be. Okay, last round. Okay, no, no. See, you might just coming forward with a different energies. It's a bit busier now. No, it's a shame that he's left it till the last round to do that. His ring control, Yamada's ring control isn't great. See how he just kind of follows without really cutting the ring off? Um, what I'd like to see him do here is just try and get around a little bit quicker. Like walk around here and try and, to, try and push him towards a corner or the ropes. Um, something Borka was really good at. Um, but yeah, kind of lets him out a little bit. It's funny, I just, I just, sorry, they, let me know in the comments if it annoys you and I keep rewinding and pausing. I understand if it does. Well, they both look at how they're both clinching. I know it's kickboxing rules, so you know clin clinching is limited. But there are times when you can just throw your opponent down to the floor. Look how they're both clinching. Like so, he's still got his left foot in front, which normally is a bad idea because it's very easy to get thrown. Um, you know, you'd want to when you do come into a clinch, you kind of want your feet underneath your shoulders instead of like still trying to stay in a fighting stance. And neither of them are trying to get control of the neck. They're both like kind of gone for body locks. Yeah, look, he's just not even doing anything here. It's not, you know, you'd think he kind of try and reach that around the head. Um, I'm not sure what his arm's doing here, but yeah. You know, if there's a chance to quickly throw your opponent down, I think you, should, you might as well take it. I don't think you get penalised for that in kickboxing. What happened? Oh. Ah, uh, yeah, you, you know, sometimes you'll be sparring in shin pads and this will happen. You'll clash knees. It's really painful. I mean, it gets back up. It doesn't look like he's too hurt, but yeah, it can be quite unpleasant. Oh, 
I mean, this has been a good a good round for Yamada here. You know, and Yamada's not the come forward and try and smash your fight with the Borko is. Just left hook up a cut. Jab so sharp by, by Ampo. I like this. Look how fast that is. Like I said, it's like very amateur boxing style, which is good. You know that Rukia Ampo has even got like an exhibition fight, which he did win by knockout against Cyril Abidi, who was uh, like a golden era K1 guy, like heavyweight. He fought like Ernesto Hoost and Banyaski and all those guys. But, um,. Yeah, he fought and beat him. Like, I mean, Abidi is 16 years, hasn't fought for 16 years. But still, he's still a natural heavyweight. And Ampo didn't look that small against him. I used to like Cyril Abidi. He was super tough. See, I mean, look how this kick lands from Yamada. Doesn't really come, rush to fire back either. Look, he's still in range. So, typically, when this le when this left kick lands, a good thing for, for you to do if you're an orthodox fighter is try and like throw a straight right straight after, especially if you've got the length that he has. Um, but he doesn't really react. You know, it comes back with a low kick. You know, and then a teep. But if he's not careful, he'll be eating those all night from Borka. There's that kick again. Less effective, you know. He's thrown it a few too many times now. I think it's three or four times he's thrown it. Nice head movement. Let's check this out again. Right hand then slips under, then right hand again. That's nice boxing. But, you know, it doesn't look like it's got a huge amount of power behind it. I mean, that doesn't mean to say that it hasn't. I mean, Yamada can take a shot, so it could be that. It's the end of the fight. A better round for Yamada. You know, the, you know, the fight definitely goes to Ampo. But, uh, yeah, so do I think he could beat Boaka? I mean, it really depends on what Borkow comes to fight. Um, Borkow, you know, like I said, he hasn't had a hard fight for, you know, probably four years now. Um, and I haven't really seen much of his training. Um, normally he's quite active on his social media. But I haven't seen him really sparring anybody. I haven't seen much pad work. So I'm not sure what shape Borkow is in. You can only go from, from history and it, typically he's never really out of shape. And he is still very aggressive when he fights. Um, I think Ampo could win the fight if he turns up and, and fights the right fight where he keeps his work rate high. Uh, you know, when he when he comes in with his boxing, he's very sharp. So it's not like he needs to stand the outside all the time. He just needs to be selective on the, on when he does come in. He can fight a really nice long game too with his with his jabs and his teeps and uh, you know some of his low kicks. Uh, I'd still lean towards Borko, even though Borko is old and, like I said, we don't know what shape he's in. But still, you know, Ampo, look, this will be the, the fight of Ampo's life, you know, and he's going to be aware of that. Um, if he puts the right game plan together, it could be, you know, a, a bad fight for Borko. But Borko's fought guys like him, you know, he's not. The tallest guy he's ever fought. He's not the fastest guy. He's not the best boxer that Borkow's ever fought. It's just concerning that Borkow is now 40, 40 years of age. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. Put it in the comments. Uh, as always, if there are any fights that you want me to react to, just leave those in the comments too and I'll get one of these videos made up. Uh, I appreciate you guys liking and subscribing. And uh, if you enjoy it, then you know please share it with your friends too. Uh, I'll even react to your fight videos if you have any. All right, guys, so I'll speak to you soon.